Hello, I'm Matthew Kay. And I'm Tom Atkinson. And we're here at uh, Brick Fair New England 2016 here in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Um, we're going to take a look at the Great Ball Contraption, uh, one of the greatest standbys of LEGO events, um, in large part thanks to uh, Tom's contribution and the contribution of uh, many other fantastically talented AFOLs. Many other AFOLs have. Many other AFOLs. So Tom's going to walk us through and give us a look at uh, this layout. So Tom, start us off. Okay. Well, we can, we're going to start right here because this particular display has uh, a couple of big poles in the way. So we're going to start in this corner with a couple of modules that are from the Brick World workshop uh, from two years ago. And uh, after two of those, we move into a module that has a, a rotating uh, disc with holes in it that uh, allows the balls to get picked up one at a time and brought up. And then they go down a uh, you know, flexible output, um, which then feeds into this, this brand new module uh, that goes over the, our entranceway. And I'm going to then jump in after we talk about this entranceway. Sounds good to me. Um, and so the entranceway is, this is its debut. Um, this was built by Jeremy Moody, a uh, new module. And if you look at the way the balls come down on the other end, it's, they're coming down pretty fast. But he's got, them, he's got them banked so that they just whip right around and everything looks good. Very nice, very nice. The new module, a new module, guys. And Tom's going behind the table for us now so he can give us a little bit of a better look. So, Tom, what are we looking at now? So, after we get across here and we come spinning down at 782 miles an hour, um, we then drop into yet another Brick World um, workshop module from two years ago, uh, which then feeds into um, one of my tipping ramp modules, uh, which has been seen several times before. Uh, then we move on to a, uh, a, an actually another new module, and this is another example, a different builder's example of the minimal module, as small as you can have. Uh, just the 10 by 10, and that's it. In and out, all in one little package. Push us in the corner, that's it. That's correct. Uh, from there, we go into my uh, counter, which has been seen several times before. Uh, from here, we move into a, a brand new module uh, by a, a, a new module builder, but a builder who's been around for a long time. This is a module by Dave Eaton. Uh, and it's a really interesting design. I, I really like this. And if you want to get a view from here, um, the, those spinning cams are uh, a, a little bit mesmerizing. They almost look like seashells. <laughs> yeah, kind of. They spiral out. Uh, and the idea being that the, the spiral out allows the ball to rise up and then, and then move into the next one. And he's got a whole series of them. Uh, from there, we move into uh, an an yet another Brick World workshop module from two years ago. Uh, from there, we go into a, a module that's uh, it's been difficult getting to the point where it's working, and it's been working all weekend. This is about the eighth time I've seen this module. This is the first time it's worked this well. And this is due to the efforts of Mr. Red, this is one of his modules. Mr. Red! Yeah, Mr. Red. Um, and so it's a very wave, clever wave design that the conveyor belt on top is stationary and the one underneath is moves and creates a wave for the balls to ride on. From there we move into another Mr. Red module which is, consists of a series of four of the last year's Brick World workshop modules um, kind of jammed together into one big module. Um, pretty neat. Yep. Uh, from there we move into a module which is made up of several of the friend slides and, they, and the balls kind of spiral their way up there. Uh, it's pretty cool. I, I had low expectations of this module but it's been working pretty well this weekend. It looks like almost impossible uh, and the way it kind of jolts violently uh, makes me even more scared but it works. That's right. It can't complain. It it has not fallen apart yet. So I, I expected it to last about ten minutes, but it's been working. me too, all day. So and then we go to shall I say it yet again another two year old Brick World workshop module. It's really exciting and unique. <laughs> 
exciting and unique just like the other ones. Yeah. <laughs> and from there we move into um, a series of uh, simple up and down type modules, uh, three of them in a row, that then feed the train. And I'm sitting here looking at the train in front of me, broken. So I don't know what's going on here, but I'll see if I can fix this. So Tom is now uh, reattaching the train and getting it going. It's going to take a shipment of balls over to the other... Uh... I found the problem. This is a problem with trains. Soccer ball on the track. That's a soccer ball on the track, folks. That is a soccer ball on the track. That's the bane of our existence, soccer ball on the track. From there, we follow that train all the way around the corner, and I'll meet you at the other station. Minion. 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 Cool, cool GBC mosaic. Go to greatballcontraption.com for some more info. Very cool. And uh, here's our boy Tom. And here we are at the train dumping station. And I'm having to help it a little bit because it's got such a full load. You know, this thing's been working great all day until I actually stood in front of it. But that happens. Uh, from there, we go out to train station into uh, Benjamin Moody's module, which we've seen several times. Um, this is, he's tweaked it here and there, and I think he's gotten it working much better than uh, it was several years ago. So it seems to be working pretty good. I, I don't think he's had any problems with it today. From there, we go into um, another module contributed by the Moody's. Uh, it's been around for a while. It's very popular because of its um, kind of rainbow brick effect. Yeah, uh, Rainbow Warrior, I believe. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the cool thing about it is it has the ability to recirculate half the balls or some of the balls. Um, and then, you know, once they, they come down this side, they go around again. They come down this side, they go out to the next module. And, and that next module would be this one. Now, this was another Moody module, which has always been kind of leaky. And, and I know he spent some, put some effort into making this thing work a whole lot better. And as far as I know, this thing has been working great this weekend. So constant improvement all the time, all the time. From here we go to um, the green pusher, which I'm sure as people have seen before. And, you know, after you've seen it a couple times, it gets kind of boring. But it's pushing something. It's pushing balls. From there we go. Balls. Balls. And from there we go to the Ferris wheel. Um, which we have seen before, but is always interesting. Um, it seems like we're running dry on balls. I don't know why. That would be why, but we'll move on. So the Ferris wheel um, is, a, is, a, is a fan favorite. I, I think primarily because of its size. You, know? it's, you can see it from a, a good distance away. Yeah, and people see it across the room and don't realize till they come over that, holy cow, soccer balls are getting loaded on there and, and then go around and get dumped off to go on to, guess what, the next module. Very nice, very nice. Coming on down, coming on down. Uh, this next module was um, one I mentioned before, and I'm going to bring this up again. This was built by a guy at uh, Brick Fair, Alabama. He was working on a module at home. He didn't get it done, but he was so motivated. I said, well, there's all my parts. Build a module. And then three hours later, he had a working module. It's been working ever since. And I haven't had to touch it. It's just amazing to me. Um, <clears throat> from there, we work in, go into my module that recirculates with the wheel. Been seen before. Lifting ramp module. Been seen before. And then moving into my up and down module which has been seen before. Uh, this one apparently has been working pretty good today. Some, it's moody. Sometimes it, it, it just breaks and breaks and breaks and breaks, and sometimes it just works okay. Well, it's had a good day. It's, uh, it looks very uh, evil, just kind of coming down and up. and uh, Evil, like uh, some kind of guillotine. I, you know, guillotine is not something. Right, on with it, on with it. Next module, next module. Guillotine, huh? I'm going to remember that. Yep. Moving on down. So the next module we move into is um, one we've seen before. It's a, my white module that kind of flips the um, balls up one at a time. And, of course, there's no balls right now. I don't know. Uh, we didn't plan this out very well. Go grab some balls, Tom. Oh, that's, we should get somebody else to do that job. 
Um, <clears throat> anyway, we're going to keep moving. Uh, for there, we move into um, a square geared module, um, which has been seen before. Um, again, it's a, a star stolen, borrowed idea. Um, and then from there, we go into um, Archimedes Screw, uh, which is a, a, another fan favorite. And I think just because it's a big, slowly turning, mesmerizing screw. It's very mesmerizing. Yeah, I, I get mesmerized. That's we got to move on though, because we'll get started. coming on, coming on. Uh, and then we do move into a we have a, a sweeper, which is a Philo module. Uh, and then we move into this pneumatic module. The pneumatic shovels all run off that ridiculously high speed pneumatic pump. Uh, and from there we go into my black hole, as I call it. Uh, module, I, I've yet to throw so many balls in there that it causes a jam. It just, it takes it. Whatever you give it, it takes all it. All the balls. All the balls. I don't, well, it, I couldn't get all the balls in there. From there, we move into my shooter, which is um, another fan favorite. Ow! Because it shoots balls. Uh, we just had an accident, y'all. Shot myself in the finger and broke the module all in one fell swoop. Very exciting. This is real, uncut, unedited footage. Yeah, I know. Are you, you guys may have to cut and edit. I turned you off. So we'll just keep going. We'll keep going. I'll come back. Sounds good. Sounds good. Onward. Yeah, yeah I know. Awkward. So from there, we move into a series of modules um, that were built by my friend Jim and his son. Um, starting with this one here, where there's a, a series of flippers that kind of push the ball along. Uh, and then we go into a, a conveyor, uh, which is really high. And this gets the balls right up there. And then they drop into this V-shaped thing to keep them under control. Um, so the um, once the balls come flying down here, they bounce around a little and then go on to the next module, which is... A conveyor. Very interesting, very interesting. <laughs> and the conveyor then feeds into a ramp, which feeds into another module, which is a conveyor feeding into a nice roller coaster module. Was this Lego flex tubing or is this like third party flex tubing? This is all Lego. Okay. Yeah, everything, everything is Lego. One of the things I'm noticing is that uh, there's a lot of plastic on plastic rubbing going on. What have you learned about Lego elements rubbing against Lego elements uh, in the course of GBC uh, in your experience? Uh, do certain types of elements sort of chafe uh, a little bit easier than others? What kinds of gears sort of fall apart with overuse? Could you give some insights uh, to the viewing audience at the moment? Well, any, any piece of plastic rubbing against another piece of plastic is going to cause wear. Um, particularly uh, uh, Lego elements. Is there any way to mitigate that? The, really, it's, it's a matter of keeping the forces under control. So if you're putting a, a lot of torque or, or too much twist or a lot of weight on a particular part and it's moving, then you're going to get more wear than is, is, is good. Um, one of the things that, that does wear out uh, faster than most people would expect is an axle in a Technic pin hole. Uh, what that will do is it'll wear the axle a little bit, but it'll wear the hole, and the hole will get will start to grow significantly bigger, which leads to a lot of looseness. And if, if you guys were really quick, you could have captured world famous master model builder making faces behind you, but he's gone now. I don't know what to think about that. Oh, that's funny. All right. And that was Eric Varsegi, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Enfield, Connecticut, uh, resident Lego m employee. All right. All right, continue on, Tom. And now he knows I'm talking about him, so he's hiding. <laughs> All right, and so from there we go into, um, after this fi the roller coaster, we go into a, a series of Archimedes screws built into one module, and then a whole series of ramps coming down. Um, this, this module is actually, uh, this was Jim's first module. I think he learned a lot from it, and uh, it, it's definitely improved over the years. 
And was, I think this thing's been working pretty solid all, all day. And from there we move into a, a problem, it looks like. Solved. No, no problem. Okay. So we go into this. This is another module made by Jim. And uh, it definitely a, a similar to a, a spinning wheel, but it's, it's four spinning arms that bring the balls up and have them roll out the ramp. From there, we go into another Archimedes screw, which is used to, to feed the balls into a, a thank you half pipe, uh, which when the balls roll down, they roll in an interesting pattern, which keeps people entertained. Very nice, and I see some trans clear uh, sort of slides up here. Yeah, now we move into um, uh, this is an, another new module uh, with a very nice color scheme going on here with the tan and dark gray and transparent. Transparent is always uh, always good for allowing to you to see the mechanisms and the balls and what's going on. So. Um, it makes sort of makes it more exciting for the viewing public. Yes, it does. Yes? You have a little bit of a jam in there, sir. There you go. There the you stick go. Fits, fixes everything. It looks like we have the builder right here. Uh, what was the most challenging thing about building this? Uh, testing it. Testing. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. I like that answer. That, sound, that sounds like a canned answer to me. I, you know, I'm sure oh. he wasn't prompted for that or anything. All right, all right. Onward and onward. Uh, what looks like we have a module by Jeremy Moody here. Yes, this is Jeremy Moody's uh, famous binomial module, which collects balls for quite some time. And you have five, four, three, two, one, blast off. That was well timed. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we timed that starting over there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now we have balls uh, going up the uh, little conveyor belt here. Very nice conveyor belt. Yeah, this conveyor belt um, is designed to handle the output uh, from the binomial module, which dumps a ton of balls at once. Uh, so it has to have a way to just dish them out slowly afterwards from there. Then moving on down, we have uh, one of those uh, sort of, I see arches, and then kind of things circulating in the arches. Uh. Yep, a bunch of flippers that drag the balls along the arches uh, and in a series of five of them and dump them into... Um, what I call my salmon run, which is a series of little poppers. Um, and they, they look like they're a little out of sync right now. Happens over time. Very nice, very nice. And then moving on down, I see this like lovely sort of jump up. Yes, jump up. The jump up is caused by springs um, and a, a cam pulling an arm down and letting it go. And once we get to the top, it goes down a squiggly ramp. Uh, and then feeds into uh, another new module, which is, um, as I'm told by the builder who's hiding behind me, is just going to get bigger and bigger. Um, he, he, this is a new module, and I know he was scrambling to get this built. He's had some issues today, but I think he's learned, and he's ready to make it bigger and better faster. We've learned that you don't use a, you don't use a worm gear with an eight-tooth gear. That's a good lesson. This whole box right here is all new. As of this afternoon. When you were building this, uh, I'm assuming you ran into some sort of challenge, whether it was uh, sort of parts or technique. Uh, if you uh, were giving advice to someone looking to build something like this or someone looking to get into GBC uh, at all, what would you tell them? No matter how simple your idea is, it will take longer than you think to build it and to work it out. So Persevere. Here we're very simple, you know, just right up the elevator, but uh, these are definitely a vindication of Murphy's Law. Anything that go, can go wrong will go wrong. But persevere at the end, right? When they, when they work, it's beautiful. like the, yes. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Uh, and from his big... What color green is this again? What's that? What color green is this? Yellowish green. Yellowish, yellowish green. Yellowish green. All right. So from the yellowish green and a long ramp output, we go into another new, new module, new builder. Um, yes. Hi. So, what do we have here? 
This is uh, this is a, a stair lifter. It's kind of like uh, the penguin race game where the penguin walks up the stairs and slides down. Well, it uses the same motion to get the ball up the stairs and, and down to the other side. My first uh, GBC ever, and I'm just happy that it works. So what was the biggest challenge for you? I, I find it very fascinating to, to kind of know what people sort of ran into as far as, like, trouble goes. Oh, you know what was stupid? I, I forgot how to make a gear chain. Because <laughs> I knew I had to gear the thing down. Yeah. Um, but I forgot that I had to change axles in order to actually make the gear go down. I had tried gearing along one f flat face, and I'm like, this is not supposed to work, but I want it to work. But, and then and I figured it out. I actually used, remember those Technic books that came out a few years ago with just pictures? I used one of those, and I'm like, oh, yes, this is what I wanted. Very and, nice, and very I'm nice. An engineer, so... <laughs> And I'm an engineer, so I felt a little embarrassed by that. But yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Awesome, awesome. Very, very beautiful, though. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So once we leave Al's module, we go into um, a couple of new minimal modules. These are two more by Mr. Red. Uh, and then we go into an Archimedes screw. This is an original Philo module Archimedes screw, which then dumps into our balldozer field. Uh, the balldozer field all day long has had um, you know a variety of of kids you know running it and uh, I I guess I admit you know I have driven it a little bit in between the kids but um, it's they have an awful lot of fun trying to figure out how to drive a, a two tracked vehicle which is not intuitive to m to most people to most adults anyway um, and then from there the the balls get pushed into that corner where they get a ball pump that pushes them onto that blue conveyor over there, which then goes down the ramp to where we started. So we've made a full circuit. I really like this module here. It's awesome to kind of get the public sort of interacting with the layout and doing something to help move the balls along. So very, very cool. Tom, thank you so much for sharing with us, and thank you to everyone else uh, here at the GBC Layout for speaking with us. Uh, very, very cool as always. Uh, always, always a pleasure. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to doing this again at the next event.